Yo, 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 yo. Hey, everybody. We're going to talk about analyzing graphs today, 6.4, and the final video of Module 6. So let's just get after it right away. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a graph, and we're going to be interpreting what's going on based on the graph. So here we have a roller coaster park. Let's call it, it could be Six Flags, okay? And it's open from May to October each year. So right here, this is probably May, and then it's also open to October. So this would be October. The graph shows a number of park visitor overs, the number of park visitors over its season. So here are the number of visitors. Here's how much time passes. So we're just going to talk about what's going on here. So early on in May, there's not a lot of visitors, and then later on, whether this might be June, July, August, September, and then October is here. So maybe in June, it looks like we have a pretty gradual increase where it goes from not a lot of visitors to a lot of visitors. And then it's at its peak and it's still going and then it dips down. And then by October, there's definitely not a lot of visitors. So what you might be asked is, well, what's happening here in part two of the graph? In phase two of the graph or in the second section of the graph, what's happening? And it's just interpreting what's going on. Well, phase two, part two, where the visitors increase could probably coincide with summer break. Normally in June is when a lot of students start getting off and going on summer break. So that they're, they're not at school anymore. So they're probably going to have more visitors. Three is probably the months of summer break. July, everybody's on summer break, right? And that's when we have a lot of family vacations. And then it's also seen that the, and number four is when we have a dramatic decrease. And that decrease in visitors is probably when school starts again. And then in September, everyone's in school. And then October, they close. So it's just being able to interpret and see what's happening with the graph. When is it not changing, which is what's is this first section? When is it increasing? That'd be section two and three, because it's also still gradually increasing, just not as much. When is it dramatically decreased? That'd be section four. And when does it gradually somewhat decrease is section five. So it's just recognizing when is it staying the same? When are we increasing? When are we decreasing? And maybe why is that happening? So here, Grace, Jet, and Mike are studying 100 words for a spelling bee. We're going to match. We're going to figure out which graph represents Grace, which one represents Jet, and which one represents Mike. So what I want you to do, actually, is I want you to pause it and see if you can match the graph to the person based on these three descriptions. Pause it and see how you do. So Grace started by learning how to spell many words each day but then learned fewer and fewer words each day. So she started off super strong and then she got worse and worse and worse in how many words she learned. Well, that would be this graph right here. She started off increasing by a lot, learning a lot each day, but then she started to not learn very many, and not learn very many, not learn very many. She started off strong and then kind of slowed down later on. Jet learned how to spell the same number of words each day. So every day was the exact same. That would be here. That's a steady rate, a constant rate of change, learning the same amount of words every single day. So that'd be a steady increase. Mike started by learning how to spell only a few words each day, but then learned a greater number of words each day later on. So started only slowly and then gradually increased. So that would be Mike. Sometimes you might have to make a sketch of a graph on your own. So Ms. Sutton provides free math tutoring for students every day after school. No one comes to tutoring sessions during the first week of school, and that's pretty common. So this will be weeks. No one comes. It's pretty common because in the first week, there's not as much learning going on. You're going, everyone's starting off with a good grade. But then as time goes on, more and more students are going to come to tutoring. So we'll have the amount of time passing by will be our X. Number of students is our Y. So we're going to sketch what's happening in this situation. So in the beginning, nobody is coming. Then over the next two weeks, use of tutoring service gradually increases. So after a couple weeks, then it's going to start to gradually increase. So the graph will look something like that. No one comes, and then we start going. Okay, so on this one right here, you're going to figure out what's happening. I want you to describe what you think is happening for the population during phase two. And then what you think is happening during phase four. This is a bacteria growth curve for the number of microbes. So pause it. Try to answer those questions. 
Okay, so in the lab environment, colonies of bacteria follow a predictable pattern of growth. Here's our growth over time. What is happening to the population during phase two? During phase two, the population, the number of microbes is dramatically increasing. Okay, so in phase two, the rate of change, and really in this particular situation, the rate of change is representing the number of microbes. is increasing at the greatest rate. So that's when it's shooting up. So something along those lines. What's happening to the population during phase four? In phase four, the population is decreasing. But it's decreasing slowly. It's decreasing slowly, not nearly as much as it increased in phase two. Okay, so we have speed of three people who are riding snowmobiles. Tell which graph corresponds to each situation. Last time, please pause and then answer questions three and four. So pause and answer questions three and four. You should be able to match graph one, two, or three with number three and number four. So Chip begins his ride slowly, but then stops to talk with some friends. After a few minutes, he continues his ride, gradually increasing his speed. So Chip starts slowly, and then he stops. So when he stops, he got to slow down, stops for a little bit, so he's going nowhere, and then he, he goes at a constant speed, increasing his speed. So Chip is graph two. Linda steadily increases her speed through most of her ride. Then she slows down as she nears some trees. So this is when we're steadily increasing, and then we just go the same speed. This one is when we're steadily increasing and then we start slowing down because this represents how fast we're going. So this one, the speed is decreasing. So that's why it's gonna be number three. That's it guys. I'm not even gonna have anything for things to remember. I think we should be fine there. Um, here's your independent practice. Go ahead and work out that problem. Everybody should have something on this one. And if you guys need any help or have any questions, please let me know. Ready is out.